Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. He's truly worthy. Worthy to be great. Thank you, Jesus. Here we are, another Sunday. Thank you, Thank you, God. Giving thanks to God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm in a battle. And I'm in a battle fighting for the Lord. Because he allowed us to be here one more day. So we ask that you join us in song as we usher in the presence of our holy Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you yet for another day that we've never seen before. We thank you for life, and we thank you for health, and we thank you for strength. 
And we thank you so much for your amazing grace. We pray now, Lord, for the next few moments that you would anoint us afresh, that you keep my mind from distraction, my mouth from error, and my heart from pride. Lord, we need a word from you in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. We need a word from you and only a word that you can send. We ask it all now in the glorious and precious name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Redeemer and soon coming King. Amen. I give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and uh, for our praise team, our musicians, and so glad to have Reverend Carpenter and Deacon Singletary with us. Amen. I want to thank the Lee Springs Church family in your absence from, uh, from worship. We certainly do miss you and look forward to that joyful reunion uh, when we come back into the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, this morning I want to continue in our theme of resurrection because we cannot exhaust the theme of resurrection because Paul said it best, if there be no resurrection then we are men most miserable, our preaching and living is in vain. In the gospel as recorded by St. John chapter 20. Uh, St. John, the 20th chapter, the 20th chapter of St. John commencing with verse 19 and reading through verse 24. We find these words. Then the same evening, day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto to them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then says Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didwamus, was not with them when Jesus came. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didwamus, was not with them when Jesus came. With your prayers and sing with the aid of the Holy Ghost, I want to talk about the day Thomas missed the meeting the day that Thomas missed the meeting. I must applaud the women for their appearance at the tomb on that resurrection Sunday morning. Saints of God, it was a woman, Mary Magdalene, the first to arrive at the tomb of our Lord. It was a woman who first witnessed the empty tomb. It was a woman who first encountered the angelic, angelic being that proclaimed he is not here. He's risen as he said. It was a woman who first encountered Jesus in resurrection splendor. Lastly, it was a woman who was the first to share the good news of resurrection. Where were the disciples on that first Easter Sunday evening? The disciples were shattered in place, hiding, cowering in Jerusalem. They were frozen by fear and paralyzed by pain. That's a dangerous duo to deal with fear and pain. Once you get fear under control, you got to deal with pain. And once you get your pain under control, you got to deal with your fear. Or it could be you're too fearful to deal with your pain. They were in hiding afraid of the Jewish and Roman officials. The door did bolted. The alarm set. Windows were secure. Now Jesus in his glorified body, unhampered by space and time, and physical substance, he makes his first appearance to his disciples, saying to so the Most High, according to verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve called Diwemus, was not with them. The biblical record is absolutely silent on Thomas' whereabouts. Perhaps he was a lone ranger and thought he had a better chance of surviving on his own. Perhaps he thought the kingdom of God movement was dead since Jesus, their leader, was dead. Perhaps he was broken hearted, dismayed, crushed, dejected, 
and just wanted to be alone. Perhaps he needed to manicure his lawn and had to get all the weeds out of his grass. Perhaps he put, put work over the kingdom and went to work. Perhaps he went to work, he had a high maintenance woman, a red bottom shoe wearing sister who diamond were her best friends. We do not know his whereabouts. One thing we do know that Thomas missed the meeting. The first thing Thomas missed by missing the meeting was peace. It's right here in the 19th and 21st verse. Jesus said, peace unto them. The disciples were confused, bewildered over the death of Jesus. They had failed Jesus, grief and guilt stricken. The first thing they received was peace. They received the peace of resurrection. Thomas missed the peace of resurrection. Peace in the Greek language is the word irene, which carried the ideal of wholeness, completeness, or tranquility in the soul that is not affected by outward circumstances or pressures. Saints of God, when we are dominated by peace, there is calmness and inner stability that results in us to remain peaceful in all situations. In other words, the more trouble, the more peace. The more pressure, the more peace. The more stress, the more peace. The more hell, the more peace. The good news is this. Your social club can't do that for you. Your frats and sorrow can't do that for you. Your political afflictions can't do that for you. Your boo can't do that for you. And your job cannot do that for you. This inward peace never depends on external prosperity and not affected by external circumstances. There are an alarming number of folk during this COVID-19 pandemic who don't have the peace of resurrection. Many are in the body of Christ. They are experiencing emotional instability, popping Prozac like chewing candy. For stress and anxiety reduction, they have no peace. Taking sleep agents to get a good night's rest, no peace. Drinking and snorting to find relief, no peace. Engaging in sexual prosperity, no peace. Now stay with me. Just a few years ago, African Americans earned over $631 billion. We spent $29.9 billion on clothing. So what we wear cannot give us peace we got plenty of clothing. Yes. We spent $22 billion on electronics, iPads, computers, speakers, smart TVs, Xboxes, and PlayStation. Yeah. They still can't give us peace. Yeah. We spent $11.6 billion on furniture. Yeah. So what we sit on, sleep on, yeah. place items on cannot give us peace. Yeah. We spent $46.7 billion on automobiles. So what we drive cannot give us peace. Thanks to the most high, the peace, her resurrection come from the assurance that whatever is disrupting or disturbing our peace, Jesus handled it with his resurrection. Resurrection says it has been handled for once and for all. Financial limitations, resurrection handled it. Physical weakness, resurrection handled it. Social dejection, Resurrection has handled it. Professional inability, resurrection has handled it. Sorrow, resurrection handled it. Sickness, resurrection handled it. Personal inadequacy, resurrection handled it. Don't have no friends, resurrection has handled it. Long nights of the souls, resurrection has handled it. Whatever you're going through, Resurrection has talented. Yeah. Thank you, God. Resurrection has already handled it. Resurrection handled everything that we're going through. What else did Thomas miss? He missed the proof of resurrection. It's right here in the 20th verse. Jesus showed his disciples his hands and his sides. Visible scars left by the spikes on that Friday by crucifixion. 
as far as Thomas is concerned, Jesus is still dead and buried. He missed the proof of his resurrection. When we don't have the proof of his resurrection, we'll keep Jesus buried. We'll keep Jesus dead. The church will keep Jesus buried in tradition and ritual. Church goers will keep him buried on the weekend like a holy hobby. The religious will keep him buried as an icon of history. Intellectual will keep him buried in debate. The agnostic will keep him buried in doubt. But Pastor Harris' point well made. What should be our response to the proof of resurrection? It's right here in the 20th verse. They said that the disciples were glad, overjoyed, elated, glad in their souls. That should be our response to the resurrection proof of the resurrection. We should not be sour. We should not be bitter Christians. We ought to be Christians full of joy and gladness. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Glad. Psalms 118, 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalm 34 verse 2. My soul should make a boast in the Lord. And the humble should dare hear thereof and be glad. The Lord has done great things for us. For that we should be glad. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. And all he done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God, Thank God. For, for saving me. Yeah. That ought to be our sign this day of the proof of resurrection. Yeah. That we ought to have gladness in our heart. Yeah. And joy down in our soul. Yeah. Yes, Thomas missed the peace of resurrection. Yeah. He missed the proof of resurrection. And lastly, he missed the power of a resurrection. Verse 22 said that Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Thomas, because he was not in the meeting, he missed the Holy Ghost, the power of his resurrection. Jesus wanted them to receive divine power because it would be 50 days before Pentecost. Before they will be filled with the Holy Ghost. They needed divine power to evangelize a hating world. They needed divine power to endure trials, tribulations, and to be good soldiers of the cross. They needed divine power to lift up the blood same banner. They needed divine power to choose Judas replacement. In 1977, New York City had a blackout. They had a power outage. People were stuck on the subways. Looting and vandalism had an all-time high. New York City was darker than a thousand midnights. The Statue of Liberty was still lit in the New York Harbor. Its torch was burning bright. This troubled some New Yorkers that New Yorkers jet black, but the Statue of Liberty was still lit up. They discovered upon investigation that the Statue of Liberty located on Liberty Alley had its own private power plant. Yeah. So what affected those in New York did not affect the Statue of Liberty. It was still lit up. Yeah. I'm so glad this morning yeah. that because of the power of resurrection yeah. I declare we got some power. Yeah. Power, power to make it through COVID-19. Yeah. Power, church. 
to make it through the dark nights of the soul. I declare we got power. Power to tread on those coverings and not be bidden. We got some power. Power to stand the tricks of the enemy. We got power. Power to keep our head lifted up to the heels on which coming our help. For all of our help. It coming from the Lord. We got power. Power to make it through the storms of life. We got power. I declare we got power. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Are you any mountains that you cannot tunnel through? The God we serve, he specializes in things impossible. And he will do what no other power will do. I tell you, we got power. Power. To walk right. Yes. Power, Power to talk right. Yes. Power, Power to live right. Yes. Power, Power to make it through. Yes. 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 I've seen yes. the lightning flash. Yes. I've heard yes. the thunder roar. Yes. I've felt sin breakers yes. dashing, yes. trying to conquer my soul. Yes. I heard. I heard. I heard. I heard him say, you never, 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 you're never alone. You're never alone. You're never alone. But what I love about that text, if you keep reading further, he says that Thomas, eight days later, Thomas, something real soft, Victor. Thomas, he did not believe him. They said, we've seen the Lord. Thomas said, I will not believe it unless I see the nail prints. I put my hands in the nail prints. But the Bible said they were hiding in fear. But Thomas was not with them, so which means that Thomas' life was not shaped by fear. So I believe in some eyes that Thomas was not doubting Jesus, but he was doubting the testimony of scared and fearful men. So you remember in Mark 6, when they was out there on that storm, and Jesus went in the mountain and pray. And then it said, during the fourth watch, Jesus came walking on the water. These same disciples said, because of fear, he's a ghost. He's an apparition. He's a ghost. So Thomas did not doubt Jesus, but he doubted the testimony of fear for men. But when you keep on reading 21, it says that, when Jesus came that, and Thomas saw his wounds, his wounds led Thomas to worship him. Now this is important because if Jesus would have risen whole, if Jesus had risen not wounded, it wouldn't do me no good. See, he had to rise damaged because he knew he was going to help folk like me who damaged. He had to, to rise wounded because he knew that I was going to be wounded. And that's why Isaiah picked it up in Isaiah 53. He was wounded for my transgressions. And my transgressions mean that there are, there, there are laws, there are, there are lines in the sand. I'm not supposed to step over those lines. But the Lord knew we were going to step over those lines, so he was wounded for that. Then he was bruised for my iniquity my flesh, that stuff in us that we were born with that bends to roar the wrong way. You know what I'm talking about? The Lord say, you go right, but you go left. Yeah. Th those urges in us that goes against the Lord. But thank the Lord, because of resurrection, we can make it. We can, we can, can make it. Perhaps you are 
watching by some device, iPad, a computer, or some iPhone, and you don't know Jesus, you've not experienced the peace of resurrection, you've not experienced the proof of resurrection, and you've not experienced the power of resurrection. Wherever you are, if you will repeat these words after me, Jesus, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you died one day on a cross at Calvary. And I believe that three days later, you rose to justify me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. And Jesus, come and live inside of me. If you have declared that, you are saved. And you can experience the peace the proof, and the power of resurrection. Praise him, we'll lead us in a song. circumstances he's worthy yes. to be praised in spite of what we are going through the psalmist said I would bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continue to be in my mouth it doesn't matter whether I'm I have money in my pocket or no money I still should praise him whether I'm feeling good in my body or not mm -hmm. I should praise him this is evident by Reverend Carpenter who made his way to the house of the Lord today amen, amen. amen. God bless you amen amen, amen. amen. We are praying for Reese's Blue and the McGorn family uh, because of that tragedy that happened on, on Thursday. Individual Brother Blue lost his life. We're praying for both both family, yes, sir. and we believe that peace is always a bit better than confrontation. Yes, sir. And we believe uh, because life is always better than death. Yes. So we're asking that we do pray for those families. Sister Sharon Bowen wanted me to say that if there's any young person in our church 
who might need any counseling, that she knows some resources that are available that would assist uh, our young people whose schedule has been changed and, and may need some counseling services. You can reach our sister Sharon, Sharon Bowden. We thank you so much for uh, Lee Spring for your support in terms of your giving, your faithfulness on Saturday morning prayer, Wednesday night Bible study. We thank Reverend Bowden for the teaching on this past Wednesday. Again, we thank our praise team and our musicians for coming. And we thank you for those who are, who are viewing us by social media. We thank you so much for your presence. We thank you those who've been viewing us, but also who've been sending us contributions. We thank you very much. Amen. We thank Amen. Sister Anita Hurst for the way she keeps our Amen. Facebook page uh, fresh and amen and, amen and updated. We thank you so very much. Amen. Now let us pray. Oh, Father God, we are so thankful to you. And God, we confess we are nothing without you. I pray now for the Blue and, and the McCorn family. We don't know all what happened. All we know is that somebody's dead. We pray now that you would comfort hearts and comfort minds. And we pray that somehow or another that you would work on those families and they somehow they will find some type of unity and come to peace one with another. And God, we pray for our world, our nation. But so many are dying of COVID-19. People are frightened, people are scared. But God, you, we have our hope in you. You promised that you would never leave us you will never forsake us. You told us when we walk through the fire, the fire shall not burn us, and neither shall the flame kindle against us, because you are with us. You are a refuge and a present help in the time of trouble. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling, present us falling before your throne, with his seed and joy and might, the, the, the dominion, power, and glory forever and ever, and the redeemer of the Lord sang together. Amen.